Pace at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. My husband looks out the window and he's like, somebody stole my truck. My truck is gone. And the truck was parked right here. And uh, we came out and looked and it was in our neighbor's front porch. Making news this morning, a crash ends with a truck on a San Antonio home's front porch. What neighbors are saying now needs to change to keep them safe at night. Plus, as the southeast recovers from Hurricane Ian, what travel experts say you need to do now to make sure your fall and winter trips are not disrupted. We've had some clouds overnight. Otherwise, things look pretty good out there right now as we wait for the sun to come up. It is 68 degrees at San Antonio International Airport. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is October 4th, and Seth's back. Hi, good morning. Hi. Hope you had a nice long weekend. It was, and the weather was perfect. It was perfect, and yesterday wasn't too shabby either, Mike Osterhage. He joins us now with a look ahead at the rest of our Tuesday as we get the morning show rolling. Good ten, morning. 10-4 ten to that. 10-4. Keep it That's rolling. That's the date today. 10-4. <laughs> yes, thank you. I, I thought you were... I just got... Acknowledging you. No, I just... Anyway. I thought you were a trucker in a former life. <laughs> anyway, um, yes, it was gorgeous yesterday. Still a lot of those high clouds around. We'll have a couple of them today, but a lot more sunshine. And uh, it's still really nice out there. We've got, again, a few clouds still hanging around here. Temperatures uh, are up a degree or two compared to this time yesterday. It's still really, really comfortable. Still a light jacket. It's not a bad idea. 61 in Bulverde, 55 in Comfort, and uh, dew point temperatures which are still below 60, still below that threshold uh, where you start to really feel the humidity, but they are actually up a degree or two. Not a big deal, kind of splitting hairs, but that's going to be the trend as we go into the next couple of days, that those dew points, humidity is just going to be edging up ever so slightly. Ragweed, moderate mold is on the low side from yesterday's allergen reading. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are going to have some clouds hanging around here. 63 degrees, so we're still going to be a couple of notches below the normal low temperature. And then flip side of that, normal high, mid 80s. We're going to be upper 80s later on today, partly cloudy skies. And we're going to be looking at 90 degrees for the next couple couple of days with a lot more sunshine middle chunk of the week. Then things slightly changed by the weekend. I'm going to tell you all about that coming up in just a couple of moments. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. Investigators say speeding is to blame for a deadly crash in an east side San Antonio neighborhood. Now, we first told you about this yesterday on GMSA, and those who live there are wanting added safety measures. At least two parked cars were hit along with a porch in the 500 block of South Pine. A pickup truck nearly went through a home, and according to police, a 45-year-old man was driving too fast and hit a parked pickup truck, sending it through a front yard and taking out the front porch and hitting a second parked truck. The driver was ejected from his car and did not survive. My husband looks out the window and he's like, somebody stole my truck, my truck is gone. And the truck was parked right here and uh, we came out and looked and it was in our neighbor's front porch. Uh, I think a lot of pe people do just blow through the stop sign because they, they know it's a four-way stop. The people that we spoke to say they have been dealing with a lot of speeding and reckless driving incidents there. They hope to set up a meeting with the District 2 councilman to see if they can get some speed bumps. This morning, search and rescue teams in Florida are doubling back to check tens of thousands of Gold Coast homes and businesses ravaged by Hurricane Ian. So far, more than 100 people are dead due to the storm. Emergency crews have made initial inspections of about 45,000 properties since Ian blasted ashore last Wednesday. It flooded seaside communities with high surf that washed away numerous buildings, bridges, and roadways. Florida's Power and Light Company now expects to completely restore power to 95% customers by Friday. President Biden and the First Lady plan to visit Florida tomorrow. North Korea has fired a ballistic missile over Japan for the first time in five years. The move has forced Japan to issue evacuation notices and suspend trains. The nuclear-capable weapon could reach U.S. territory of Guam and beyond. The launch early today was the most pro provocative weapons demonstration by North Korea this year as it ramps up missile tests and its push to build a full-fledged nuclear arsenal. The United States said it strongly condemns North Korea's dangerous and reckless decision. A new survey this morning finds soaring inflation and recession fears won't disrupt travel plans for families over the next few months. As seen as Jen Sullivan reports, it comes as the industry recovers from disruptions from Hurricane Ian. Autumn is here, and the travel industry is hoping to soar past cancellations and delays caused by Hurricane Ian. 
in the chaos of a summer surge as it prepares for a busy fall season amid soaring inflation and recession fears. With a lot of now pent up travel demand, there's some uh, uh, wonder that maybe this time will be a little bit different. A new survey finds Americans are still making fall travel plans despite higher costs. According to the latest quarterly State of the American Traveler report, close to two thirds of surveyed American travelers still plan to go on at least one overnight trip in the next three months. And for those traveling by car, gas prices are creeping up, a trend that started before Hurricane Ian disrupted some oil production in the Gulf of Mexico, though the main facilities were not directly hit. Nationwide on Monday, the average price for a gallon of regular gas was nearly $3.80. That's up from the recent low of $3.67, according to AAA. But that's not keeping some drivers off the road. Is it going to change as much as I drive? Probably not. It comes as the travel industry braces for a potential airline merger between Spirit and JetBlue, with some travel experts warning it could lead to less competition and give consumers fewer options. So even if you never fly Spirit, you may face higher fares if they no longer are an airline that's competing with the Deltas and the Americans of the world. If you're planning a trip this fall, experts recommend you book flights early, be flexible with your plans, and consider international options. For today's Consumer Watch, I'm Jen Sullivan. 436, 68 degrees. And from new ovens to iPhones, we're going to show you which items are on the best sale this month so you can get a jump start on your holiday spending. Is Dak coming back for the Cowboys this week? We'll have that in reaction to Cooper Rush's new record as a starting Cowboys quarterback. And let's take a quick look at the roads out there with our trans guide cameras. Looking there at Highway 90 at Nogalitos, things are moving. And also moving at Highway 281 in jones Montford. You know, it's weird for no rhyme or reason. Mm -hmm. I saw heavier traffic this morning coming into work on 281. I have no clue why. Oh, it's a Tuesday. It's just a random Tuesday. <laughs> uh, right now, you're looking out at San Antonio International Airport. Very pleasant start to our day here in early October. You're uh, watching GMSA. We'll be right back. Pro Football Government, powered by Davis Law Firm. Everyone still talking about the unbelievable job Cooper Rush has done stepping in for the injured Dak Prescott in Dallas. He's gone three for three this season as a starter, four and zero, dating back to last year. His first Cowboys quarterback to ever do that. However, Rush will be the first one to tell you he's had a lot of help, especially from the Dallas defense. It hasn't allowed more than 19 points a game in their first four games. That's the fewest since 1973. Trayvon Diggs picked up his second interception of the season, the first half. In the second, he prevented the Commanders from scoring by batting the ball on the way in the end zone Sunday. He, uh, so is he surprised? The Cowboys are now 3-1. and one. I wouldn't say that I expected it because I didn't, but I f like how we handled the adversity. You know, we're handling it well. You know, we're going about our business the right way, and we're putting it on tape. At this point, Dak is expected back this week when the Cowboys travel to L.A. to face the Rams. The uh, KSAT 12 Sports will be there. We knew ever since the feud, offseason feud between AM head coach Jimbo Fisher and Alabama's Nick Saban over Saban statement. The Aggies bought every single player in their recruiting class that October the 8th was going to be big. Game week has finally arrived for AM and the Alabama Crimson Tide. To make matters worse for the Aggies, they have fallen out of the top 25 out of getting run out of Starkville by Mississippi State. And now Bama is number one again. Fisher was asked if his players need to relax a bit more so they can play games as well as they practice. Relaxing is not it. It's practicing with habits and so you have confidence to play. You say relax. Relax is your confidence comes from working hard and doing it every day and knowing you can do it. And you don't practice it till you do it right. You practice it till you can't do it wrong. A lot of times you can do it right, but how many times can you not do it wrong? That's the key, and how consistent you can be. Everybody says relax. Well, everybody can relax. Take a deep breath and relax. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, kickoff is set for Saturday at 7 o'clock. Maybe it was the question. The Red River rivalry has arised. The annual meeting between Texas and OU at the Cotton Bowl for the first time since 1998. Neither team is ranked. Longhorns coming off that victory over West Virginia to improve to 3-2. and two. The chapter Hudson card passed for 303 yards. Three touchdowns, no interceptions. And B. John Robinson rushed for over 100 yards and another TD. Now it's being ready for the Sooners. 
who just got trounced by TCU 55-24. Orange head coach Steve Sarkeesian told reporters they are the healthiest they have been at the quarterback position. My philosophy is pretty simple. Play the, play the guy that I think gives us the best chance to be successful, uh, whether he's the starter, the backup, hot hand, not whoever, whoever I think is, is going to give us the best chance to be successful and put us in position to win the ball game, that, that's who we'll play. You can catch the Red River Rivalry live on KSAT 12, 11 o'clock Saturday morning. And good luck to your team, Steph. Thank you very much. We need it. <laughs> Time now, 443 and 67 degrees for now. And are you ready for some good sales? We're going to tell you where you can get the most for your money this month. Kim Kardashian's crypto controversy will tell you why she's having to pay more than a million dollars for a post she put on Instagram. And welcome back. It's 445. Kim Kardashian has been fined more than $1.2 million for a social media post promoting cryptocurrency. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, Kim Kardashian's crypto controversy. Kim Kardashian. Famous for turning reality TV fame into a billion dollar brand, now paying the price for what the SEC says was unlawfully promoting crypto on social media. Kardashian agreeing to pay more than $1.2 million for this June 2021 Instagram story touting Emacs tokens, a cryptocurrency sold by Ethereum Max, without disclosing she was paid $250,000 to post about it. This is just the SEC's way of saying, hey, you know, we don't want people to to lose their money on on these things. So are other high profile crypto endorsers also at risk for fines? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Right now, store shelves are stocked with Halloween costumes and also Christmas sweaters. Hold on your sides. Marilyn Morris shows us where some of the sales are for October. We've barely started carving the pumpkin and retailers are beginning to roll out holiday blockbuster sales. With two multi-day site-wide sales this month, Target Deal Days and Amazon's Prime Early Access Sale, you'll be able to find deals that come close to what we expect for Black Friday on giftable items like tech devices, kitchen appliances, fitness equipment, apparel, toys, and so much more. Amazon's already showing some of its devices up to 70% off. Consumer Reports tracks prices on its top tested products all year, so here's what to look for this month. The long weekend around Indigenous Peoples Day, also called Columbus Day, is typically deal time on mattresses and big appliances. Kitchen need a cooking upgrade? This LG Electric Smooth Top range is now $764 at LG and the Home Depot. That's $85 off. And now that Apple's new phone is out, October is a great month to find lowered prices on top-rated previous models. The iPhone SE is $429 at Amazon. Consumer Report says this is the best iPhone price less than $500 that it's tested. And finally, you can keep the home temperature just right with a new thermostat. This Honeywell is $155 at Amazon. A worry about shopping early is what if the sale is better later? Well, look out for price match guarantees. For example, beginning Thursday, if you buy something at Target and the price drops lower before Christmas, they'll refund the difference. So save the receipts. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. And a look out there with Trans Guy looking again over there at Highway 281 at Jones Maltzberger. Things look pretty quiet right now, but Marky said there was a lot of uh, activity earlier this morning off of 281. Yeah, there was. Uh, not seeing it right now. Maybe it was just I had a bunch of new friends and I didn't know it. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome. Mike's here with Fido's forecast. Green paws across the board today, Mike? Yes, indeed. Look at that. You can almost smell the puppy breath with little baby Louie. Look at that little yeah. face. You know, he's just like, oh, who's a good boy? I know. Aww. So uh, dog walking, if you want to send in pictures and uh, just scan that QR code. Yesterday was fantastic to be outside because we did still have that little veil of some of those high clouds out there. We're going to be seeing more sunshine today and it is going to that's going to help things to warm up. I mean, still comfortable. Humidity is still OK, but, you know, you're out in the direct sun long enough and it does kind of kind of heat you up there after a while. We do have a few clouds hanging around here this morning. 67 degrees uh, mid 
50s in the hill country and some upper 50s as well. So overall numbers are up couple of degrees, uh, you know, not a big deal. And still, like I was talking about off the top of the show, we've got mid uh, 40s, right around 50 for dew point temperatures. So still well below 60. That's the, the threshold number. Although in some cases, these numbers are up a degree or so. And I know that's like splitting hairs, but that's going to be the trend for the next couple of days and even going into the weekend. So add a degree or two to the dew point temperatures each and every day. And it just won't be as refreshing. We'll put it that way, especially in the mornings uh, once we get in toward the weekend as opposed to the past couple of days. And we'll keep a lot of uh, some mid high level clouds around this morning. Mid 60s bottom out at 63 degrees and then make it up into the mid and upper 70s through late morning 81 at noon. And then we are going to be topping off. I'm going for 89 later on today. And we will have, like I said, more sunshine, couple of leftover clouds hanging around here. Here's what the water vapor imagery looks like. And again, here this bright Brighter shade. This is the moisture loft in the atmosphere, and that then equated to all those high clouds that were out there yesterday. And now it's starting to, you see this darker shade, so less moisture aloft, which means we're not going to have as much in the way, obviously, of some of those high clouds later on today. And as far as uh, computer models over the next few days, more sunshine and this one doesn't have a lot of those high clouds, but we'll have a lot more sunshine tomorrow as well as Thursday and then later Thursday clouds start to work their way back in here. Most of cloudy to just plain cloudy skies uh, at times Friday as well as on Saturday. I know there's a couple little spots here and there where long range model wants to pick up a, a shower to maybe you know, here or there, but I don't even have anything in the forecast for it just because there are pretty much zilch as far as rain chances over the next week or even a couple of weeks. 81 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to 89. So we are going to be on the above normal side. We are going to be at 90 the next couple of days and then mid 80s, a little bit more humidity and long holiday weekend here. So temperatures will be somewhat close to normal readings right around mid 80s should start to heat up maybe a little bit more with more sunshine then on Monday. But I mean, you know, the lack of rain notwithstanding, still a good looking forecast. Um, not as fallish maybe as we'd like to see, but perhaps way down the road a front. I'm not even gonna go there yet, so. <laughs> I mean, it's still it's still way down, you know. Like weeks? Couple, couple weeks. Okay. okay. We can hang. But a lot can change between now and then. Of That's course, true. it could get colder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna get him there. Uh, 452, 67 degrees. Yes. I know how this goes. Yes, yes, we do. Coming up next, Kate Hudson shares why she loves her new movie role. Plus, Will Smith will be back in a new movie very soon following his slapping incident with Chris Rock. First trailer for Will Smith's new movie is released, and there's a new number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Will Smith, once again an award season contender less than a year after Slapgate, the first trailer's out for his new film Emancipation. Apple TV Plus setting a December release date for the slavery drama after reports earlier this year Apple might delay the release in the wake of Smith slapping Chris Rock at the Oscars. Remember when you tipped me two dollars? That wasn't enough, was it? Kate Hudson's new role is a lot different from the characters we're used to seeing her playing. In Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon, she stars as a New Orleans stripper and hustler looking to make a buck any way she can. She tells me she loved it. But I like to be uninhibited, you know. it's I like playing characters that could be intrinsically unlikable and, and make them fun to watch and likable, in a, you know, in a way. That's, that's fun and challenging for me. Mona Lisa and the Blood Moon is out now in select theaters and for streaming rental. A brand new number one song on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart, Steve Lacey's Bad Habit marks the Compton, California singer's first number one. And it's been a long, slow climb to the top. Bad Habit first hit the chart back in July. And actress Dakota Johnson with a birthday today, she's 33, while Ray Donovan's Leah Schreiber is 55. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News. Los Angeles. Time now, 457 and 66 degrees for now. Search and rescue teams in Florida continue to find more casualties from Hurricane Ian, but there is hope. We'll tell you about special delivery of pets that arrived in San Antonio last night and when you might be able to adopt one. And Twitter is rolling out the edit button to its blue subscribers, except for users in the U.S. We're going to tell you why. 
And Transguide right now, not seeing much of anything right here. I did see one report of a stalled vehicle 281 down close to the downtown area. I will double check that for you. We are not seeing it on the Transguide cameras. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We just want the officers that were there from the school district suspended until an investigation is completed. Protests continue in Uvalde. The school district had planned a town hall meeting last night. We tried to find out why it was abruptly canceled with no explanation. Search and rescue crews still have their work cut out for them in Florida. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien. How they're trying to reach areas cut off from the mainland by the hurricane. And taking a look outside with live cam, it's still feeling like October, which is fine with me. We're at 66 degrees right now. Not a bad night. Good morning, everybody. It's Tuesday, October 4th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good Monday. I know the weather was beautiful, even in the afternoon with the sun out. It really was. What's the cloud situation out there this morning, Mike Oster? Hey, we've got a few clouds hanging around here. Most of the cloudy skies are being reported at uh, most locations in and around the area. And then we'll see more sunshine later on today. We saw, you know, plenty of it yesterday, although we still had that kind of that veil of some mid high clouds out there. That veil is going to be a lot thinner later on today. So actually, we were out and outside and didn't have any, you know, shade. It wasn't bad but a little, little warmer today and uh, we're at 66 as of right now. 86 and 64 are the normals, the average high and low temperature. So we are going to be close to a normal low this morning and then on the warm side getting up to 89 later on today with more sunshine around here and that's going to be the trend the next couple of days because we're going to have more sunshine even more so the next couple of days. The aquifer yesterday went down six tenths of a foot and the allergens ragweed is on the moderate side so maybe be causing a couple of sniffles out there and mold remains on the low side. So speaking of some of those high clouds, this is the water vapor imagery and this just shows the moisture loft in the atmosphere. The darker this graphic is then the less moisture up there. This is what we had yesterday and uh, coming in here from Sunday. All of this moisture from the Pacific Ocean, this brighter shade of gray. And now, as you can see, now it's not completely gone, but it is definitely thinning on out. The moisture is there, so that's going to equate to more sunshine out there and just a little layer of uh, some clouds. So if you are heading outside today, even though you need a jacket this morning, you sure won't need it later on this afternoon because we're going to have a lot more in the way of sunshine around here. 81 at noon, 87 by mid afternoon, then we'll top off, like I said, at 89 degrees with that uh, a little bit of an easterly to southeasterly wind at about 10 miles per hour. Hey, if you want to find out some great pumpkin patches, because it's time to take all the pictures of the kids in the pumpkin patches, just uh, scan that QR code and we've got a whole list of them. We'll take it to our uh, website. All right, what's in store for the weekend? Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority. Good morning, Stephen. What's cooking out there? Hey, good morning, Mike. Well, it definitely felt good when I left the house this morning. And right now, drivers have a lot to look forward to, especially if they are an early bird commuter getting ready to grab that cup of coffee. It's a perfect time to take advantage of these quiet roadways. There's 410 at Starcrest. You can see that uh, traffic even there by the airport has been pretty light throughout the morning, and that's always expected this early. But let's take you to the map because those Transguide cameras aren't really showing any problems, but you see it right Right there on our map. That's over here off of 410 in the eastbound lanes right there at Roosevelt Avenue. We a crash popped up just a few minutes ago, according to TxDOT. Uh, unfortunately, no cameras are actually in the area, so we're not able to show you the conditions out there. But nonetheless, I'm going to get our friends at Transcat on the phone, find out if uh, they can get us any shot. But uh, it doesn't look like we may be able to show you what that condition looks like out there. But right now, conditions as far as the drive time look like they're in pretty good shape. That journey from Bernie, 24 minutes on I-10 if you're traveling in the eastbound lanes, 28 minutes on 281 southbound. We're seeing a little bit of a delay there uh, coming in the southbound lanes from coming in from Mulverde, pardon me, and a 26 minute drive time on I-35 southbound traveling in from New Braunfels. So an area, well, of course, we're going to have to watch closely. It's going to be 410 right there near Roosevelt Avenue, but back here at 37 at Fair Avenue, things seem to be moving just fair. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. Natalie, breaking news. It appears someone had murder in mind when they fired shots into a home in far west Bear County. Deputies found two women with gunshot wounds, one of them dead. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Bald Mountain, not far from Marbuck Road and Loop 1604 in Katrina. We understand they also found a whole lot of shell casings. 
Yeah, good morning. Uh, I had a chance to talk to a sergeant a little while ago, and she told me they were still counting up all the shell casings that they found here. Well, she had already surpassed 100 shell casings that they found right here in the street. This is Big Mountain. That's the name of the street. And this is where they found those shell casings. Now, uh, apparently they were aiming at a home here on the street, whoever fired those shots. And they did hit two women inside a home. One of them, according to the Bear County Sheriff's Office, was killed. The other woman shot in the leg. Now, deputies got the call here after 1230 this morning. As they arrived, they noticed that there was a white car speeding out of this neighborhood. Some of the deputies went after that car while the others tended to the situation here uh, at, on the street. And they did, uh, again, they did find two people shot inside a home. The other deputies went after the car. They did manage to stop it with the help of San Antonio police out near Highway 151 and Acme Road. They say they took two people in into custody. They're still trying to figure out if, in fact, those people are connected to the shooting that happened here. They say that witnesses gave them a description of the car involved, which was a white four-door car, and the car that they stopped was also a white four-door car. So they are trying to see if, in fact, there is a connection. But in the meantime, they do have a woman dead here uh, inside a home, and they are trying to piece together exactly what happened. Now, uh, deputies tell me they're going to be here for several more hours. I have to point out that we are very close to an elementary school, so we're going to try to find out whether that will impact the hours that the school will operate and if there are any instructions that parents need to know while there's all this police activity happening very close by. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Katrina, thank you for that report. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man's in the hospital after being stabbed in the chest overnight. Happened just after midnight in the 700 block of North Colorado near West Martin. That's just west of the downtown area. Police uh, would only say that the victim in his 50s was stabbed by another man that ran away. Officers were not able to find the actual crime scene or a suspect. Unanswered questions from Uvalde CISD officials. A week after parents started protesting, outside of the district central office. Brett Cross, Uzziah's Garcia's guardian, has been leading that protest, and he tells Lee Waldman that he's not backing down on his demands for accountability. Families of Rob Elementary victims and their supporters aren't moving from Uvalde CISD's central office or from their demands. We just want the officers that were there from the school district suspended until an investigation is completed. We're not asking for unpaid. We're not asking for jobs right now. Brett Cross has had one meeting with Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell last week, and Saturday he met briefly with Beth Rivas, another district official. So far, no progress. I'm steadfast in what I'm doing. I'm not going anywhere until these demands are met. Last night, the district had planned a town hall, but abruptly canceled those plans with no explanation the day after Cross's protest started. I tried asking Kenneth Muller, the director of student services, about the cancellation. Any comments about why the town hall was canceled? He wasn't the only one not wanting to talk. Dr. Harrell's not here right now. They're not what about right Anne Marie Espinoza? She's not here either. I asked her if she could check with Dr. Harrell's receptionist on when he'll be back. Her reply was short. No, ma'am, they're not available. She wouldn't tell me her name, but the woman working at the reception desk said it was Susie. Susie, what's her last name? Smirnoff. I couldn't find a Susie Smirnoff on the district directory. Dr. Harrell's receptionist eventually called back and said she'd deliver my message. That was at 345 and I haven't heard back. Anne Marie Espinoza, the district's communication executive, returned one of my emails. She wrote, quote, schedules are not able to accommodate a meeting, unquote. Despite the constant roadblocks and unanswered requests, Cross's commitment is not wavering. I can wait them out and that's what I'm going to do. There's been a constant stream of supporters. Cross says it's not just families from Uvalde, but people coming from San Antonio and even from Santa Fe to offer their support for his fight for accountability. UCISD's next board meeting is next Monday. At this point, there's no word on if that town hall will be rescheduled. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. Thank you, Lee. Well, this was the scene late last night when approximately 75 dogs and 30 cats affected by Hurricane Ian arrived here in San Antonio. The San Antonio Humane Society partnering with Florida Animal Shelters to help with their transition here. Humane Society staff and volunteers prepared kennel areas and assembled crates that were used to welcome the incoming pets. 
The organization hopes to give these dogs and cats a second chance at finding forever homes while also freeing them up much needed space in Florida shelters deeply affected by the hurricane. The dogs and cats will become available for adoption through the Humane Society once they're cleared by vets. If you'd like to support the Humane Society's hurricane rescue efforts, the shelter is accepting monetary donations and, of course, supplies. Meanwhile, at least 103 people in Florida and North Carolina have been killed by the storm. And as ABC's Jay O'Brien reports, President Biden plans to visit Florida tomorrow to survey the damage. This morning, the number of people killed by Hurricane Ian, now more than 100. Nearly a week after the storm first made landfall in southwest Florida as a powerful Category 4 hurricane, search and rescue operations are still underway. There's more ser urban search and rescue teams in Florida now than in any one place in American history since September 11th. Many of the rescue efforts focused on barrier islands like Sanibel and Pine Island, which had bridges and causeways destroyed in the storm and have been cut off from the mainland for days. Crews now dumping gravel to create a makeshift road to Pine Island for first responders and aid workers. And after Ian knocked out power to more than 2.6 million people, the state's largest utility company pledging to get electricity restored to most habitable homes by the end of the week. Some Floridians forced off the grid, just now learning of the devastation. I just am now seeing pictures. I've had no internet, no cable, no nothing. So I'm just now taking a glimpse. And I'm... I mean, what are you seeing? How, how, what is that like to see this area like this? The destruction clear in Fort Myers Beach along the coast where whole blocks were obliterated. Temple Condon is there still waiting on help from FEMA. We really don't want to leave because this is all we have left. So, I mean, that's the biggest fear. Once we leave, we can't get back. The state of Florida has also created a disaster relief fund to help those impacted by the hurricane. So far, officials say it's raised more than $21 million. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And we have an update on our phone bank results from yesterday. We were trying to raise money for the Ian Storm recovery. In all, we were able to raise about $18,000. While the numbers are still being tallied this morning, you can still donate to the Red Cross by scanning this QR code on your screen. That rough estimate also includes the $10,000 donation from Park King. 512, 66 degrees. Twitter rolls out the edit button to blue subscribers. Why it's available just yet in not available yet in the U.S. Outside with live cam down to 66 degrees on a Tuesday morning. You can roll those windows down on your way into work or school early this morning. Mike's full forecast and we'll check back in with Stephen Cavazos and an update on your commute straight ahead. Former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela back in court this week. Now, a month after her conviction of tampering with records, the punishment phase of her trial continues. Judge Velia Mesa could hand down the punishment in this case by the end of the week. Proceedings were paused yesterday due to court scheduling conflicts. The disgraced former public official faces between two years probation and 10 years in prison. That is after altering security payment logs and handing over false records to law enforcement while under criminal investigation in the summer of 2019. 516, 66 degrees. And coming up next, how Google is updating one of its Pixel phones one last time. Sony is betting big on virtual reality. We'll tell you how many of its new PlayStation VR 2 headsets are already on order. Indulgent chocolate with a luscious caramel filling. With love from San Francisco. Ghirardelli Caramel Squares. Makes life a bite better. Mornings are our time, and I couldn't let stiff joints slow me down. So I started taking OsteoBioflex every day because it has joint shield. Clinically shown to improve joint comfort within seven days. OsteoBioflex, available at your local retailer and club. 
Kellogg's combine crunchy oat clusters with a touch of honey, plump, juicy raisins, and tasty fiber into one delicious cereal? It took a lot of brainstorming. Get it? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Two scoops of delicious. Time check is just about 520. Let's get a quick look at the roads. Not a good situation here at 410 at Morrison. I know it's pretty dark out there, but I was able to get our friends at Transcat on the phone and we're actually able to see just a smidge of the crash that was reported out there a little bit earlier. Very dark and again, this is the closest shot we can get, but you can tell from that shaky camera there are some flashing lights out there, so you have to make sure you watch out for those first responders. Let's take you to the map where we're seeing that crash is actually in the eastbound lanes, not far from Roosevelt Avenue, but also seeing that buildup taking place down there. Uh, you have to watch out carefully. Again, it's an area where we're really not able to show you the conditions fully, but again, first responders are out there working to improve the roadways. Giving you a wide look at the map, you see that there's going to be a lot of road closures taking place, and that's always expected, but let's take a look and see what will take place uh, later today on I-35 on the northeast side. It's actually later tonight. Drilling work, which will begin again at 9 in the evening and last up until 5 in the morning. It begins again uh, today and should wrap on Thursday, October 6th. Left lane closure on northbound frontage road of I-35 from Bomar Lane to O'Connor Road. But you know where to find that information. It's on KSAT.com slash traffic and just scroll to the bottom of the page. But right now, traffic here at 410 at Morrison doesn't look too bad. Uh, doesn't look too good right now, guys. We'll Dang. wait for your update. Thank yeah. you, Stephen. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> All right. It's a there we go. There okay, go. Go. forecast. Okay. Yes, and what with the equal time to the cats there you and go. it says yes enjoying the weather but the cat's sticking its tongue out i know that's what cats no. do <laughs> mischievous is it just like saying haha i'm sitting here not doing anything so beautiful cat though love white whiskers on there so thank you for the uh, ksat connect picture and again scan that qr code and makes it really easy to send us all those uh, wonderful ksat connect pictures got some clouds right now 87 for a high temperature yesterday and that was despite the fact that we had that veil of some high clouds out there. There's going to be less in the way of some high clouds today, so I'm going up a couple of more notches. As a matter of fact, 89 for high later on. 90 in New Braunfels, all around the metropolitan area. We are going to be upper 80s, close to 90 degrees around here, so we'll still be Oh, you know, a good three, four, in some cases close to five degrees above normal for high temperatures. And we will be slightly below normal for a low temperature getting down to uh, 63. We'll keep some clouds around this morning. Then we'll start to see again more sunshine. Call it partly cloudy skies later on today. 81 at noon. And like I said, we top off at 89 later on today with just a few of those high clouds out there. But it is thinning out. The moisture is starting to uh, thin out out there. So here's what it looks like on the uh, satellite picture right now. we got some clouds hanging around. That moisture still coming in here from the uh, Pacific Ocean, but it is starting to, like I said, sort of uh, thin out somewhat. And then up to the north, big system moving across. That's moving straight across the, the country and out here to the northeast. That's the uh, leftovers of what was Hurricane Ian, still a big rain producer up there to the northeast. Speaking of the tropics, the only thing going on right now, out here around the Cape Verde Islands, there is a system which Hurricane Center is watching, has a right now a decent chance of developing probably moving off uh, straight to the northwest and then this little batch of clouds which hurricane center is flagging with about a 10 percent chance of any development in the next couple of days this one right now looks like it may move into the caribbean so we'll have to obviously keep an eye on that but again only about a 10 percent chance that it would develop into anything over about the next uh, two or three days today we are going to be seeing 81 degrees partly cloudy skies so some morning clouds probably one of those beautiful sunrises again mixed in with some of the the higher clouds clouds like we had yesterday and then a high temperature today it's going to make it up to 89 with again just fewer high clouds out there a lot more sunshine tomorrow as well as Thursday, but then later Thursday, probably dinner time, we'll start to see clouds move back on in here a lot more Friday, Saturday, Sunday and 90s the next couple of days. And then we'll be down again closer to normal readings by the weekend. OK, not bad at all. Mm -hmm. yeah, we'll take it. OK, Thank you, Mike. 524, 66 degrees. And let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, we have 491, Fireball 8. Daily 4, 1638, Fireball 9. Cash 5 numbers, 149, 16, 28. Texas 2 step, 11, 28, 31, 35, with a bonus ball of 17. And Powerball 2, 16, 22, 55, 63. Powerball 22, Power Play 4.
today's Tech Bytes, Twitter rolls out its edit button. The feature users on the platform have been clamoring for is up and running. But the edit button is only available to Twitter Blue subscribers in Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Twitter says the U.S. will get it soon. It's the end of the line for Google's Pixel 4 and 4 XL. The company rolled out its last guaranteed software update for those two phones, delivering minor bug fixes and security patches. Soon it may be time for a new phone. The Pixel 4a will continue getting updates, though, through next summer. Finally, Sony is betting big on virtual reality. It has ordered 2 million PlayStation VR 2 headsets, according to Bloomberg. The report says Sony is going to market the headsets, which will require a PlayStation 5 to work. No word on when those headsets will be available, but you better have your head in the game when they are. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. 528, 66 degrees. And coming up, proceedings continues to try to convict suspects in the attack at the U.S. Capitol. We're going to tell you about why prosecutors are looking at charging them with a Civil War era statute that is rarely prosecuted. Plus, we'll tell you how much more you probably have to pay to find that perfect Christmas tree this year. And how much do you know about breast cancer? Well, it turns out there is a lot of common myths that are out there about the disease ahead on GMSA at 6. We're going to break down some of the more common misunderstandings. Trial underway for five defendants charged in the riots at the U.S. Capitol. Why prosecutors are expected to hit them with a statute that's been around since the Civil War. And let's take a look outside with live cam. We're happy we're starting off at 66 degrees. Things will warm up, but, you know, it's still going to be nice. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, October 4th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you've had a good week so far. I know it's only Monday, but, you know, the weather helps, I think. It really it's does. It's been such a nice change around here, Mike. We could use a little rain, but we've, for all intents and purposes, have given up on that for now, haven't we? Yeah, indeed, yeah. Oh, by the way, Miss, I had the day off. It's Tuesday. Monday for you, but... <laughs> oh, goodness. Did I say Monday? <laughs> <laughs> yes, and now your week me. is just going to be not, all messed up. If you not to rub it in. Off, so. <laughs> anyway, uh, we do have some clouds hanging around here right now. And temperatures, uh, like Steph said, are in the uh, mid 60s, 66 degrees. The normal low is 64. We'll be right down in that vicinity. Still got very dry air. Along that number is well below 60. That's what we like to see. But that is going to start to creep up just a little bit in the next few days. So 65 Stinson, 64 is at both uh, Kelly as well as Randolph and uh, mold is on the light side, but ragweed is moderate. So if you are sneezing and sniffling, that may indeed be the, the reason for it. So mostly cloudy. We still have some of those high clouds left over from yesterday. Pleasant to cool light jacket, uh, sweatshirt, the usual that we've needed the past couple of mornings. Definitely not this afternoon, partly cloudy skies, so we'll have less in the way of some of those high clouds out there. Upper 80s for a high temperature, so we are going to be about 3, 4, 5 degrees above normal. And that's going to be the case the next couple of days. As a matter of fact, more sunshine and even warmer. We're looking at 90s here in town, and then we go into the weekend. Plenty of clouds, and it is a long holiday weekend, and we'll be in the mid-80s but slightly more humidity as we really go into tomorrow afternoon and then going in through the weekend. Not oppressively humid, but you'll just notice it a lot more. All the details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen, anything we need to know about? Yeah, I would say this has been the problem right now of the morning, Mike. 410 at Morrison. We showed that shot a little bit earlier before we went to a, a commercial break here. Uh, this is a crash was actually reported over in the eastbound lanes. Now, it's uh, very difficult to actually make out what the scene looks like. Our friends at Transguide were able to get us this view, but you can see that there are still a few flashing lights out there in the distance. So obviously this does indicate that there is still a scene. Taking you right to the map. Uh, we are seeing that buildup in the eastbound lanes of 410, not far from Roosevelt Avenue. Uh, the good news is here. Uh, it's still very early enough to where we're not seeing such an impact with traffic, but it's still pretty. It's, it's obviously reflecting right there on our map. There is something going on out there in terms of a buildup, so just make sure that you watch out carefully for those first responders. As always, we hope everyone is doing OK out there, but we take you to the map and thankfully a lot more relief out there. You see just a lot of those road closures. I'll continue to talk about that as long as it stays quiet throughout the morning. But it looks like the commute here is also going to be a little quiet, or I should say green from Seguin. 29 minutes right now on I-10 westbound. If you're traveling in this early in the morning, a little more than half an hour, usual drive time on 87 northbound. Traveling up from Lavernia, and right now our friends down in Flotusville can expect a 27-minute drive time as they make their way into the Alamo City. But let's take it back to a rotation at Transguide. We're 410 at Villa Main, 410 at Morrison. This is going to be the shot that we'll show you for a few, uh, for the, as long as it's still present. But we'll continue to watch these roads closely and have those updates right here on GMSA.
Mark Stuff. Thank you, Stephen. Updating late breaking news. Gunshots fired from outside have hit two women inside a home in West Bear County. One of them died from her wounds. Trina Weber is live on the street called Bald Mountain, not far from Marbrook Road and Loop 1604. And Katrina, do investigators know the reason for the shooting? Well, that is one of the many questions they're trying to answer this morning uh, as they continue to work here on Bald Melton. This is the 11,400 block. They've been here since a little bit after 1230 this morning. Now, this started out with a call about shots fired on the street. Deputies, uh, several of them rushed to this area. And as they were getting here, they noticed a white four door car speeding away. Some of the deputies chased after that car while others investigated the situation here. They did find that two women inside a home were hit by gunfire that was sprayed from outside. One of the women died of her wounds. The other one shot in the leg was taken to a hospital. Uh, deputies say they found more than 100 shell casings here in the middle of the street. Now back to those two deputies that, or the deputies that chased after the car, they did get that car stopped with the help of San Antonio police out near Highway 151 and Acme Road. They say they took two people into custody. They're still trying to determine if those people are connected to the shooting scene here, but they say that witnesses told them the car involved in the shooting was a white car, a two-door, uh, Oh, I'm sorry, four door uh, white car. And so the, the vehicle seems to match up, but they're still trying to uh, assess the situation and see if those people inside the car are connected to the shooting. Again, no, uh, no reason at this point do they know uh, for why this shooting happened, but one woman is dead, another one shot in the leg. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thanks, Katrina. 536, the highest profile case to come from the January 6th Capitol attack, is now underway in federal court. As ABC's Andrew Dembert explains, members of the Oath Keepers group, including their founder, are standing trial facing numerous felony charges, including a charge from the Civil War era. This morning, five members of the far-right militia group, the Oath Keepers, facing decades behind bars. The trial kicked off Monday with the five defendants charged with seditious conspiracy, a rare and serious charge that carries a penalty of up to 20 years in prison. The five have pleaded not guilty. Among them is the group's founder, Stuart Rose. In opening statements, federal prosecutors said Rose and the other defendants, quote, concocted a plan for an armed rebellion and banded together to do whatever was necessary to stop the transfer of power between Donald Trump and Joe Biden. According to the FBI, Rhodes allegedly began planning to disrupt the transfer of power soon after the November 2020 election. This is what he said just days after the election. We have men already stationed outside D.C. as a nuclear option. In case they attempt to remove the president illegally, we will step in and stop it. That same day, he sent a text message to high-ranking Oath Keepers saying, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. Prosecutors argue that over the next two months, Rose recruited dozens of Oath Keepers and then deployed the militia to Washington, D.C. and Virginia on January 6th to disrupt the certification of Biden's victory. In his own opening statement, Rhodes' lawyer argued that the Oath Keepers never planned to attack and instead were waiting on Trump to invoke the Insurrection Act, a move they argue would have legally deputized the militia. But prosecutors shot down the idea, saying Rhodes and his group were only claiming to rely on the Insurrection Act to hide illegal actions and played an audio clip from 2020 in which Rhodes told associates that while the Insurrection Act gave them legal cover, his plan was to fight against the government no matter what. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Economists are starting to project the cost of devastation from Hurricane Ian. Some estimate the storm likely caused about $50 billion in damages to Florida, plus several billion dollars worth of damage to South Carolina. That would make it one of the most, uh, one of the costliest natural disasters in recent history. According to Oxford Economics, it could slash third quarter economic growth in Florida and South Carolina by several full percentage points. Even the national economy could take a hit, putting a dent in gross domestic, domestic product growth in the near term. A chief economist says Hurricane Ian could bring down the fourth quarter GDP by nearly 2%. And jury selection is underway in Houston in the retrial of a man accused of killing his parents when he was a teenager. 
Antonio Armstrong Jr., also known as AJ, was 16 when police say he shot his parents to death back in 2016. Prosecutors say former NFL linebacker Antonio Armstrong Sr. and his wife Dawn were killed in their sleep. AJ Armstrong's first double murder trial ended in a hung jury back in 2019. The trial is expected to run through at least November 4th. Flight attendants will soon be getting more rest time between flights. The FAA expected to announce the change today to welcome news for flight crew unions who have been fighting for the much needed rest time. The union says flight attendants ha are heavily fatigued and overworked after clocking in about 14 hours. Airlines are aware of the coming change. The FAA will hold a press conference later today at Reagan National Airport to, quote, make a major announcement, end quote. And the time now is 540 and we're at 66 degrees for now. Better start saving a little more for Christmas this year as far as your tree. We'll tell you how much tree farms are expected to charge customers. And taking a look outside with live cam, pretty nice right now. We're at 66 degrees. We'll take that. And later, I like the way Mike put it. He says we're going to be flirting with 90. All right, we'll be right back. And welcome back. It's 543. In your morning consumer headlines, in-store samples are back at some Trader Joe's. The grocery store giant is offering single-serve treats and snacks to customers, many of whom posted videos and photos of their granola and Halloween cookies over the weekend. Now, hot coffee, however, remains on the burner and will not be handed out until further notice. Many brands, but especially startups, use samples to get attention from potential customers. However, the COVID-19 pandemic halted the practice due to safety concerns. Other their companies, including Costco and Sam's Club, have already brought the samples back. Yes, they have. Consumers going to the store to buy Tupperware will now actually be able to buy Tupperware. Though many people refer to any plastic food container as Tupperware, it's a specific brand that isn't sold in stores. Instead, the 76-year-old company relied primarily on Tupperware parties, ask your mom or grandma, when a direct marketer hosts an event in a home to sell the products. Tupperware was also sold on its own website. Just three months after launching on Amazon, Tupperware has now announced it will be sold at Target stores. Interesting. I remember those Tupperware parties. Well, it's 82 days until Christmas, and Christmas trees are expected to cost more this year. A survey of 55 wholesale Christmas tree growers found 71% expect to raise wholesale prices. The growers account for about two-thirds of the nationwide supply. Many of them plan to charge retailers 5 to 15% more with some even saying their trees will be 20% more. Tree farms do not expect shortages because this year's harvest looks good, but they say operating costs have gone up over the last year, and that includes everything from labor and raw materials to shipping trees to retailers. So if you paid about 125 for a real tree last year, it's going to cost you closer to... 150 this year, 140, 150. Uh, we we have the the uh, fake tree. The fake tree. Yeah. Yes, I'm a fake tree guy myself. Yes. 544, 66 degrees. Take a look at the roads with Trans Guy looking over there at Highway 281 at Jones Mossberger, and also at 1604, looking like things are moving. We'll be checking in with our Stephen Cavazos very soon. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome our lost loved ones back to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each has a specific purpose. Flowers symbolize life, and one specific flower has become the symbol of Dia de los Muertos. Marigolds, or Sempasuchil, are used to make crucifixes, or the arches of ofrendas. Their bright colors and potent smell are said to attract the souls of the dead. And during Dia de los Muertos, you'll find seas of them in Mexican cemeteries. You can also use them to create a path from the front door to your ofrenda at home. 5.48 on your Tuesday morning. I was looking at Loop 410 and Starcrest. Things are moving a little bit more. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, you know, uh, as we're getting closer to 6 a.m., things obviously are going to get busy, but right now I wouldn't say that there's anything major that's going to really slow down drivers for the majority of the commute this morning. Taking a look around town, 281, 281 by the airport, US 90 at Nogalitos. Yeah, things look fine there, but we have an issue that's still being reported there along Loop 410 over right there by the south side. You see it right on our map, and uh, but just by glancing, also looks like 
like another crash popped up right here along Loop 1604 on the far west side. So we'll find out if there's any cameras out there, see if we can get our friends at Transguy to show us the conditions. But let's take you into this problem here. Uh, this crash again reported sometime just before five this morning. It was causing a slight delay for drivers, but nothing too major. Uh, but of course, we always want to make sure that you watch out for those first responders. The shot from Transguide really just showed those uh, flashing lights out in the distance, but nonetheless, make sure that you give them plenty of room anytime you see them out there. All right, uh, let's take a look at what's going to take place a little bit later tonight as well. Over here on 410 on the west side of San Antonio, rail installation will actually begin tonight and should wrap up on Thursday, October 6. Uh, actually, we'll see that take place at 9 in the evening and should wrap at 5 in the morning. Single northbound main lane closure from Old Pearsall Road to Medina Base Road is what drivers can expect to see if they drive through that area during that time. But just again, watch out for those crews out there and 410 at Starcrest. Traffic's coming at us without any trouble there, but we'll watch roads closely and have those updates here. Guys, thank you. Steve. Here's the picture for Mark. Oh, okay. They're wearing a little fishing hat. Fishing weather. Yeah, that's cute. Yeah. yeah. Who's our fisher dog? It we doesn't have a name, have a name there. Oh. It just says Aww. just says fishing weather. So <laughs> anyway, he looks like a him. scout. Like if we had to give him a name right now, I'd just say scout. that scout. That's appropriate. Scout? Yeah. yeah, I like that one. OK, is this good fishing weather, by the way, Mr. Angler? Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's not bad, not bad right now. We're waiting for the water to cool down even more. That gets the fish more active. Oh, okay. Yes. So that'll be way down the road. The way <laughs> well, actually it's already doing. started. A lot of the lakes have dropped from the eighties down in the seventies. That helps. Oh, they have. Yeah. So we've started the transition very slowly. Okay. Yeah. Good weekend for it coming up as well. We'll talk more about that. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. And again, scan that QR code, and that makes it really easy to send in all those wonderful, wonderful pictures. Some clouds right uh, around the area this morning, and uh, it's, it's just a few of those leftover high clouds. We will drop down to 63 degrees. 64 is the normal low, so right about where we should be. And then we are going to see more sunshine than what we had yesterday. We had that veil of uh, some high clouds out there, but that'll be a lot thinner, so more sunshine is going to get us up to 81 at noon and then top off at 89 later on today with 86 being the normal high temperature. So still starting off slightly on the cool side, but ending up on the warm side. And that's going to definitely be the trend over the next couple of days. So a couple of clouds hanging around here right now. There's just some of those uh, mid high clouds out there and those will continue to uh, sort of thin on out. And then there's nothing really heading in our direction. I mean, we've got this big system up there to the north of us, but that's all pretty much moving straight uh, east to west, excuse me, west to east. High pressure is pretty much parked right on top of us. Not a good situation as far as any rain trying to develop. This is just kind of pushing down in the atmosphere right now. And then what it's eventually going to be doing is sort of scooching over into the, the Gulf of Mexico. And that low, a cutoff low, is going to be developing over there around the Baja of California. This is not really what you want to see as far as that position of that high for a fall type weather pattern. Perfect situation would be that thing parked off to the west of us in a big trough, which is still coming in here from Canada and moving in toward the Great Lakes in that kind of configuration, which is what we had a couple of weeks ago with the that front trying to move on through here. That would be optimum to see some really good fall weather. But in this situation, this low is probably going to start to throw more moisture in here. We will start to see more clouds moving in by the uh, the weekend. But yeah, this is just not anything to uh, give us a, a really good front moving on through here. Perhaps something by two weeks down the road, but again, it's two weeks down the road. So it's uh, kind of a just a wishful thinking as of right now. 81 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature today makes it up to 89 and with partly cloudy skies. Then over the next couple of days, we are going to be even warmer, getting up to 90 uh, tomorrow, Thursday, more sunshine. Humidity is going to creep up. It's not going to be just oppressively humid, but it is going to continue to creep up here. And then long holiday weekend, we are going to have temperatures. Highs are going to be close to normal. Low temperatures will be on the warm side of things thanks to some of that extra cloud cover and some of the extra humidity. So it just won't be as refreshing when you step outside. I'll put it that way. Hmm. Okay, kind of back to what we're used to, I guess. <laughs> yeah, not really summery, mm -hmm. but not what we had. Yeah, like Sunday morning, you know, when it was nice and chilly really out there. Really nice, yeah. yeah. It was almost cold. Yep. 553, 66 degrees on your Tuesday. We're going to go ahead and look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick 3, 4, 9, 1, Fireball 8, Daily 4, 1, 6, 3, 8, Fireball 9.
And the rest of your numbers here, cash 5, 1, 4, 9, 16, 28. Texas two-step, 11, 28, 31, 35 with a bonus ball of 17. And Powerball, 2, 16, 22, 55, 63. Powerball, 22. The power play was 4. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the major escalation by North Korea overnight, firing a missile over Japan, while Vladimir Putin raises the threat as Russian forces lose ground to Ukraine. We're going to have the latest on all of that. And this morning, the around-the-clock search and rescue missions still happening in Florida as the death toll keeps rising from Hurricane Ian. We're on the scene. And the stunning report about widespread abuse in women's soccer, the reaction this morning, and the call for change. That and so much more right here on GMA. Ahead the next hour, good morning San Antonio. The San Antonio Main Study stepping up to help those animals displaced by Hurricane Ian. We're going to tell you how you can help them too. Checking transcribing right now, we've been watching these flashing lights through the trees at 410 and Morrison. Stephen Cavazos will have a live update coming up as we approach the top of the hour. And Mike Osterhage has your Tuesday forecast. We have some clouds hanging around South Texas this morning. We'll be back. Gunshots fired into a home, killing one. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. You won't believe how many shots were fired at that home. I'll tell you more about it. Search and rescue crews still have their work cut out for them in Florida. I'm ABC's Jay O'Brien. How they're trying to reach areas cut off from the mainland by the hurricane. And we had a nice weekend and a nice Monday. And today we're looking at 66 degrees this morning. Not too bad for a Tuesday. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Time to rise and shine with us. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday, October 4th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you have a chance to go outdoors. Maybe enjoy a cup of coffee outdoors, but come back and watch us. Monday that. morning, we had a few clouds around. That made for a spectacular, somewhat dramatic sunrise. And Mike Coaster H says we may have a repeat performance today. Yeah, still have some of those clouds. They were left over throughout the day yesterday. Helped to kind of take the edge off the, uh, the sunshine, if you will. We still got up to 87, but, you know, it wasn't that just intense sunshine beating down on you and we are going to have more though in the way of sunshine less in the way of clouds today so we'll still start off uh, as we were talking about with a few clouds hanging around here this morning uh, 66 the average normal low is 64 we'll continue to drop down a couple of more notches here and there down to 52 in comfort 67 canyon lake 59 in Balverde. overall temperatures are up just a hint compared to yesterday morning the humidity which is still really comfortable but it's up just a hint compared to yesterday that will be the trend by the way, over the next few days with a little bit more humidity here and there. Ragweed is moderate. Mold is on the, uh, the low side. And we do have an ozone action day around the metropolitan area. And then also heading up I-35 to Austin today. Temperature will drop down another, like, like I said, a degree or two. And we have some of these clouds hanging around here. And then less in the way of high clouds later on this afternoon. 81 at noon and partly cloudy skies with a high temperature. Yep, we're going to make it all the way up to 89. So flirting with 90 later on today and then won't be any flirting the next couple of days or just plain old hit 90 the next few days with a lot more sunshine big question will we stay that warm going into the weekend details coming up in just a couple of minutes traffic authority steven got issues out there you've got that kind of furrowed brow look on your face uh, yes uh we <laughs> furrowed brow uh i like to furrow my brow when there's a problem out there 410, we did have a problem here at 410 at Morrison. You saw it through the trees, as Mark pointed out before we went to break, but uh, looks like our friends at Transcott are showing us a smoother commute, which could indicate that that crash that we talked about earlier in the eastbound lanes has cleared out because we're not really seeing a buildup out there, which is good news, but we take you to the map, and that crash was picked up right here along 410, not far from Roosevelt Avenue. Now, our map has already cleared that out, so that does look like progress. I'll get our friends at Transcott on the phone, find out exactly if that is the case, but it does appear to be so giving you a wide look at the map now at 603. The main topic of the morning will obviously be those road closures and you can see them scattered in and around the Alamo City. So we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So just make sure you plan your commute before you get out the door. And if you are going to
going to be traveling into San Antonio. The good news is nothing really is going to slow you down just yet. So pretty pleasant on I-37 if you're traveling up from Pleasanton with 28 minutes at this hour. Usual drive time about half an hour if you're traveling in from Castroville on Highway 90 in the eastbound lanes and that arrival from Lytle looks to be about 16 minutes if you're traveling up I-35 northbound. Let's take it back to that rotation on Transcad where we see that the commute is picking up there at 281. We'll watch the roads closely, but as always, make sure you do the same. Mark. Thank you, Stephen. Dozens of shell casings outside a West Bear County home painted a sad picture of what sheriff's deputies found inside. They say two women were hit by the gunfire. One of them died. Katrina Weber is live on a street called Bald Mountain, not far from Marbach Road in Loop 1604. And you mentioned earlier, Katrina, that they have some people in custody. Well, that's right. Uh, deputies do have two people in custody. They were in a car that they stopped with the help of San Antonio police at another location. Now, they say that car matched the description of one that they got from witnesses that was involved in the shooting here. But they're still trying to sort everything out and determine whether those people were connected to the shooting. Now, right now, uh, we still have a pretty active scene here on the street called Bald Mountain. This is the 11,400 block. Uh, we still have deputies uh, outside the home. We also have a uh, van from the medical examiner's office. According to what we were told, about 12.30 this morning, sheriff's deputies got a call about shots fired here. They arrived. They did find that two women inside a house had been hit by gunfire. One of them was killed. The other shot in the leg. They found more than 100 shell casings out in the street, and they believe that those shots were fired by someone in a car. Now, some of the deputies who were arriving here noticed a white four-door car speeding away. They chased after it. With the help of San Antonio police, they were able to stop that car out near, loop, out near Highway 151 and Acme Road. And again, they did take two people into custody from that car, but they are not saying yet that they are suspects here. They're still trying to sort all of that out. They don't know the reason for the shooting. Now, uh, I do want to point out that this is pretty close to an elementary school built. Big Country Elementary. Uh, there is a lot of activity right here on this neighborhood street. Uh, it does not appear that that is going to affect school, but it's possible that this may be on the bus route. So we're still trying to nail that down and find out whether this is going to have any impact on people going to that nearby school. We'll let you know as soon as we find out. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Unanswered questions from Uvalde UCISD officials a week after parents started protesting outside of the district central office. Brett Cross, Uzziah Garcia's guardian, has been leading that protest, and he tells Lee Waldman that he's not backing down on his demands for accountability. Families of Rob Elementary victims and their supporters aren't moving from Uvalde CISD's central office or from their demands. We just want the officers that were there from the school district suspended until an investigation is completed. We're not asking for unpaid. We're not asking for jobs right now. Brett Cross has had one meeting with Superintendent Dr. Hal Harrell last week and Saturday he met briefly with Beth Revis, another district official. So far, no progress. I'm steadfast in what I'm doing. I'm not going anywhere until these demands are met. Last night, the district had planned a town hall, but abruptly canceled those plans with no explanation the day after Cross's protest started. I tried asking Kenneth Muller, the director of student services, about the cancellation. Any comments about why the town hall was canceled? He wasn't the only one not wanting to talk. Dr. Howell's not here right now. They're not what about right Anne Marie Espinoza? She's not here right now. I asked her if she could check with Dr. Harrell's receptionist on when he'll be back. Her reply was short. No, ma'am, they're not available. She wouldn't tell me her name, but the woman working at the reception desk said it was Susie. Susie, what's her last name? Smirnoff. I couldn't find a Susie Smirnoff on the district directory. Dr. Harrell's receptionist eventually called back and said she'd deliver my message. That was at 345 and I haven't heard back. Anne Marie Espinoza, the district's communication executive, returned one of my emails. She wrote, quote, schedules are not able to accommodate a meeting, unquote. Despite the constant roadblocks and unanswered requests, Cross's commitment is not wavering. I can wait them out and that's what I'm going to do. There's been a constant stream of supporters. Cross says it's not just families from Uvalde, but people coming from San Antonio and even from Santa Fe to offer their support for his fight for accountability. 
UCISD's next board meeting is next Monday. At this point, there's no word on if that town hall will be rescheduled. And Uvalde, Lee Waldman for GMSA. And new warnings from the United Nations about rising interest rates. It now says the Federal Reserve and other central banks risk pushing the global economy into a recession if they keep raising rates. The Fed in September raised rates by three quarters of a percent, the fifth hike in a row. Car buyers not buying quite as much in the last few months. Edmund says sales from July through September were down nearly 1%. The only standout, General Motors, which posted gains throughout the summer. Airlines are trying to fly through another shortage on top of staffing issues and parts problems. They are not getting enough jets. Boeing and Airbus are now months behind delivering new jets to U.S. carriers. Both playmakers say they are continuing to work through supply chain problems. Back to the headlines. At least 103 people in Florida and North Carolina have been killed by Hurricane Ian. I believe it's actually South Carolina. The urgent search for survivors continues days after the storm first made landfall. ABC's Jay O'Brien reports. Good morning. As Florida prepares for that visit from President Biden on Wednesday, search and rescue crews still have their work cut out for them. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis says 1,900 rescues have been conducted so far, and other crews are going door to door, checking in on those who rode out this devastating storm. This morning, the number of people killed by Hurricane Ian, now more than 100. Nearly a week after the storm first made landfall in southwest Florida as a powerful Category 4 hurricane, search and rescue operations are still underway. There's more sur urban search and rescue teams in Florida now than in any one place in American history since September 11th. Many of the rescue efforts focused on barrier islands like Sanibel and Pine Island, which had bridges and causeways destroyed in the storm and have been cut off from the mainland for days. And after Ian knocked out power to more than 2.6 million people, the state's largest utility company pledging to get electricity restored to most habitable homes by the end of the week. Some Floridians forced off the grid, just now learning of the devastation. I just am now seeing pictures. I've had no internet, no cable, no nothing. So I'm just now taking a glimpse and I'm... I mean, what are you seeing? How, how, what is that like to see this area like this? The state of Florida has also created a disaster relief fund to help those impacted by the hurricane. So far, officials say it's raised more than $21 million. Jay O'Brien, ABC News, Washington. And this was a scene late last night. Around 75 dogs and 30 cats affected by Hurricane Ian arrived in San Antonio. The San Antonio Humane Society is partnering with Florida Animal Shelters to help with their transition here. The organization hopes to give these dogs and cats a second chance at finding forever homes, while also freeing up much needed space in the Florida shelters deeply affected by the hurricane. The dogs and cats will become available for adoption once they are cleared by veterinarians. If you would like to help, the shelter is also accepting donations and supplies. Time check right now, 611, 66 degrees. And much more to come on GMSA. Coming up a little later, a scary scene caught on camera. The moment a car comes smashing into an Iowa home, we're going to tell you if anyone was hurt. And along last Twitter rolling out a new feature users have been asking for for quite a while. However, not everyone gets to use it right away. We'll explain. And taking a look outside with a live cam, it feels like fall right now, 66 degrees. Enjoy. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 615. Twitter is rolling out its edit button. It's a feature users on the platform have been asking for. But right now, the edit button is only available to Twitter Blue subscribers in Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Why? I don't know. Twitter oh. says the U.S. will get it soon, Mark. Okay, close enough. It's the end of the line for Google's Pixel 4 and 4 XL. The company rolled out its last guaranteed software update for those two phones, delivering minor bug fixes and security patches. So it may be time for a new phone. The Pixel 4a continues to get updates through next summer.
in time now, 616. Roads look okay from here, but let's go ahead and check in with our Stephen Cavazos. Yeah, better news to report out at 410, but let's get a quick look around town, see what you can expect. 35 in Nogalitos is a pretty busy area, and you can get a shot there at Ben Zingelman. Yeah, things are moving just fine from a lot of what we're seeing here at Transguide, but if you've been with us for the last hour or so, we've had that crash off of 410 over in the eastbound lanes of Roosevelt on the south side of town, but that is cleared out, and right now what we are seeing is just some smooth sailing traffic there at 410 at Fredericksburg. Just take it easy right now on your way to grab that cup of coffee. Giving you a shot of our map here, we also have a lot of those road closures that are taking place. Let's talk about what will be taking place a little bit later today. Our US 90, uh, oh, pardon me, Wednesday, I should say, US 90 uh, over in Bear County here. Sign installation will begin again on Wednesday, 9 in the morning to 5 in the afternoon. That's when you'll see a single westbound main lane closure right there at Montgomery Road. So watch out if you're traveling in the westbound lanes, maybe heading out toward Castroville on Wednesday or maybe any little bit any time between that time period. So again, just watch out there, but taking it back to trans guide, things are moving just fine. Better news to report now that we're in a busy hour, guys. Thank you, Stephen. So that's what's happening on your side of the studio. Yes. Yeah. Opposite side, Mike <laughs> Osterhage. Good looking weather still. We've had uh, a couple of high clouds hanging around here the past few days, and there'll be less in the way of high clouds, a lot more sunshine, and that's going to be the trend over the next few days then. Rolling school bus, still a jacket, sweatshirts, pretty good idea. We've got some 50s in the hill country. We'll drop to 63 here in town. Call it most the cloudy sky. Should be a really good looking sunrise this morning, and then later on today, 89 partly cloudy skies, so we'll still be about three above normal, three, four degrees above normal, and we'll continue to, to add to that uh, every once in a while. All right, go to the uh, HEB, and it may be a little bit spooky at the checkout there. I love that. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think I had that same checker last week. <laughs> really? <laughs> Very quiet. <laughs> It's just fantastic. I, I just love that when nice. people do stuff like that. So yeah. they asked them over and over to wear the name tag, and uh, what are you gonna do? Keep oh. dropping off, I guess. <laughs> oh, isn't that name tag right there? Oh, is oh, it, oh, is. it, is. it is. There you yes. go. Wow. See, I can't, I, I can't zoom in on that. I wonder what the name is. I know. Oh. Maybe, maybe we'll get an email. Anyway, oh, I thought the producer was going to give me a name. It was just giving me a time. Uh, <laughs> make sure you scan that QR code to send in the uh, KSAC Connect pictures. All right, no glow of the sunrise yet. Uh, we will have, like I said, some uh, some clouds out there still this morning. Most of the cloudy skies are being reported around much of the area, and we'll drop down to 63, and then uh, we'll see a lot more sunshine than what we had yesterday late morning and get up to 81 at noon, and then uh, more or fewer in the way of those high clouds out there 89 for a high temperature later on today. So average high temperatures uh, are 86 right now. And then by the weekend, we're going to be at 85 degrees. The next couple of days we hit 90 and then we'll drop a little bit more clouds kind of work their way on in here, but we'll still be at or a little bit above the average normal high temperature going into the weekend. So nothing too, too extreme low temperatures. Now, right now, the average low temperature is 64, but that will be dropping down as well. So we will be three, almost four degrees above the average low temperature once we get into the weekend. So that's not necessarily, I don't think, a trend that we uh, like. We'd like a big front moving on through here. Nothing right now. Quick check of the tropics. This batch of clouds out there in the eastern Atlantic, better chance of development from the uh, Hurricane Center. And then this batch of clouds, very small chance for development. But as of right now, it looks like it is forecast to work its way in toward the Caribbean. So obviously something we will keep an eye on. Tropical season, of course, lasts through the end of November 81 degrees, partly cloudy skies today at noon. High temperature is going to make it up to 89 again, partly cloudy. Still some of those high clouds fewer than what we had the past couple of days. 90 tomorrow, Thursday, a lot more sunshine. Clouds move back in here then later on Thursday, about to say dinner time on Thursday, and then we'll have more clouds over the weekend. Bit more humid as well. Not anything too oppressive, just not as crisp, not as refreshing. You'll notice it a bit more when you step outside and that will uh, uh, be the case through the weekend. A bit more humid a stretched bit. out over several days. Yes, indeed. Almost blowing the sails on the Nina Pinta or Santa Maria. Indeed. Thank you very much, Mike. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, 620 on your Tuesday morning. Glad you're with us. And Kim Kardashian has been fined more than $1.2 million by the SEC for a social media post promoting cryptocurrency. That's coming up next in your GMA First Look. 
KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, Building the Ofrenda. Ofrenda means offering, and on November 1st, these altars welcome back our loved ones to the world of the living. They're built with many pieces and parts, and each of them has a specific purpose. For the Aztecs, earth, wind, water, and fire were nature's four elements, and they're very important when building an ofrenda. These elements symbolize the world of the living, and they help call back our loved ones on Dia de los Muertos. To represent the earth, include their favorite foods, flowers, and salt. For the wind, hang some papel picados to wave in the breeze. To quench a spirit's thirst, put out a glass of water. And lastly, there's the candle. Once lit, it represents fire and the soul. Indulgent chocolate with a luscious caramel filling. With love from San Francisco. Ghirardelli Caramel Squares. Makes life a bite better. Mornings are our time, and I couldn't let stiff joints slow me down. So I started taking OsteoBioflex every day because it has joint shield. Clinically shown to improve joint comfort within seven days. OsteoBioflex, available at your local retailer and club. How did Kellogg's combine crunchy oak clusters with a touch of honey, plump, juicy raisins, and tasty fiber into one delicious cereal? It took a lot of brand storming. Get it? Kellogg's Raisin Bran Crunch. Two scoops of delicious. In this morning's GMA First Look, Kim Kardashian's crypto controversy. Kim, this way. Kim. Kim Kardashian. Famous for turning reality TV fame into a billion dollar brand, now paying the price for what the SEC says was unlawfully promoting crypto on social media. Kardashian agreeing to pay more than $1.2 million for this June 2021 Instagram story touting Emacs tokens, a cryptocurrency sold by Ethereum Max, without disclosing she was paid $250,000 to post about it. This is just the SEC's way of saying, hey, you know, we don't want people to to lose their money on on these things. So are other high profile crypto endorsers also at risk for fines? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. And the time now, we're at almost 626 and 66 degrees right now. Still ahead on GMSA, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. We'll tell you about some common myths about breast cancer. And a man is recovering after he was stabbed in the chest overnight just west of downtown. We're gonna tell you why San Antonio police are left with so many questions this morning. And checking the roads with Transky. This is an incident at 410 and Villa Main. Stephen Cavazos will have an update for all of us coming up right here live on DMSA. More than 100 gunshots fired in this West Bear County neighborhood hitting two women inside a home. One of them died. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll tell you why investigators may not be able to count on some neighbors for help with this case. And caught on camera, video from Iowa shows the moment a car comes slamming into a house. We're gonna tell you if anyone was hurt. And caught our, our very own live cam right now. The sun is slow to wake up this morning. Must have been a very comfy sleep last night. Still <laughs> under the covers. Those clouds are kind of hanging around too. So that may be obscuring just those first hints of that sunrise. Good morning, everybody. We've made it to Tuesday. It is the 4th of October. That's right, October 4th, 10-4, uh, I guess. Uh, you said that earlier. I thought you were just, you know, saying 10-4, like you agree, but... It just is being, actually 10 4. Formal, I'm saying, yes, it is, it is 10 4. So I wonder if the sun, if the alarm went off, because as soon as the alarm goes off, you know how you can just you know, sleep for about three days. Mm -hmm. But leading up to the alarm, you're kind of like, eh, and then as soon as. Yeah. Well, let's take a vote. Do you think the sun could hit the snooze button? All in favor say aye. No. Nay. The nays it, have it. Because it will, it will come across the, uh, come over the horizon. 
on its scheduled time. So it almost looks like there may be a little bit of a glow out there right now. We do have some clouds, and so it's going to be one of those dramatic sunrises. 66 in town, dew point 47. So we're uh, still a couple of notches above normal. We'll drop down a few more degrees in the next hour or so. Cloud cover acts like a little bit of a blanket. And then 47 dew point, that's well below 60. So that's really comfortable out there. Uh, low 50s hill country. Once again, light jackets, really good idea, sweatshirt. And you won't need it by this afternoon because we are going to be warming up quite a bit. Ragweed moderate mold is on the light side. And this morning, mostly cloudy again, pleasant, pleasantly coolish, I guess you could say. And then partly cloudy skies. We'll have some of those high clouds like yesterday. I don't think as much in the way of the high cloudiness, which is. but uh, we're going to have to watch the area closely. Of course, uh, as around this hour, we start to see a buildup take place in a lot of those hot spots as people are getting out on the road and getting their morning started. So just prepare for that. But let's get back on rotation here. 281 at Jones Maltzberger there at 37. Traffic is moving just fine, guys. Thank you, Stephen. Sheriff's investigators are trying to find out why someone took aim at a home overnight. The gunshots hit two women inside, killing one of them. Katrina Weber is live on, on Bald Mountain Street, not far from Marbach and Loop 1604. You mentioned earlier, the Katrina, that they found more than one shell casing. All those gunshots had to create a lot of commotion. Did investigators find many witnesses? Well, they say that they did find some people who gave them a description of the car involved. The shots were fired from a car, but you would think that the entire neighborhood would wake up from all of those gunshots. I actually found a man who says he slept through the entire thing. Now, there has been no sleep for the deputies here. They've been here all night since about 1230, actually 1230 this morning. They've been working here in the 11,400 block of Bald Mountain. Now, I can still see some of those shell casing, those markers on the ground from where they found more than 100 shell casings. I also have some video uh, to give you a little closer look. We were able to get a little closer earlier this morning. Uh, they say that someone in a white four-door car fired the shots at the home, hitting two women inside and killing one of those women. As deputies arrived, some of them noticed a white four-door car speeding away from this area. They chased after that car, and with the help of San Antonio police, they managed to stop it out near Highway 151 and Acme Road. They took two people into custody, but they're not calling them suspects in this case just yet. They're still trying to sort everything out. Now, uh, I do understand, uh, I've been told that the sheriff is actually on his way, so we expect to get an update from him once he gets here and gets filled on in on everything that they have learned uh, during the course of their investigation this morning. So we will have more information for you on this case once we get it from him. I also mentioned that there are some schools that are very close to this area. Uh, this is, seems to be contained to this neighborhood. We don't know whether any of the school children might be trying to get out of here to go to school, but I do have a call out to the school district to try to find out more about whether this is going to have any impact on those schools. Reporting live in West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News.
Thank you, Katrina. Also new this morning, a man behind bars facing a murder charge after a deadly shooting at a graduation party here in San Antonio back in June. 19 year old Manuel Hernandez is accused of shooting and killing 19 year old Joshua Palma. Now, police say it happened on Rimhurst Street back in June on the city's far west side. According to an arrest affidavit, the victim and his friend bumped to Hernandez, bumped into Hernandez while walking through a crowd and started finding a witness later told police a gunshot rang out during the fight, saw Hernandez holding a gun. Right now he is in jail on a $150,000 bond. Also new this morning, San Antonio police say a man is in the hospital after being stabbed in the chest overnight. It happened just after midnight on North Colorado Street near West Martin, just west of the downtown area. Police would only say that the victim is in his 50s and was stabbed by another man who got away. Officers were able to find the actual crime scene or the suspect. We're going to bring you updates on this news story as information becomes into our new term. San Antonio Crime Stoppers asking for your help solving a pair of robberies. The first happened back August 31st at a music center in the Northwood Shopping Center at 281 and 1604 on the far north side. Police say the man on your screen right now walked into the store and asked the manager to see a guitar. Then he took off with the instrument. The other incident happened August 19th at the Academy on Parambital at Loop 410. Officers say the suspect on the screen stole items from the store. When the manager tried to stop her, the suspect threatened to pull out an electric stun gun. If you have information that can help police solve either of these cases, call the number on your screen. That's 210-224-STOP. There are 35 days until the November 8th election, and things are getting heated in the race for Bear County Judge. Republican candidate Trish DeBerry is going against Democratic candidate Peter Sakai, but it's DeBerry's accusation against a political ad that has her calling foul. Trish DeBerry would crawl across steaming hot coals to be county judge. You might have seen it right here on KSAT, paid for by a group calling itself Friends of Bear County LLC. DeBerry called the group a dark money corporation formulated in the state of Del Delaware, and she claims she has, quote, multiple sources that say Bob Wills of the advertising agency The PM Group is involved. Wills said he was supporting Sakai, but denied any connection to Friends of Bear County, LLC. I can't provide you formal documentation today. All I can do is say we're filing an ethics complaint. The AG is going to investigate. Hopefully the DA is going to investigate. This is nothing more than a political stunt to bring attention to her campaign that is far, far behind. Now, Sakai has also denied having anything to do with the negative campaign. In a statement texted from his campaign, manager Sakai said in part as, quote, a judge, as a judge for 26 years and a firm believer in the rule of law, it is critical to have concrete evidence when making an allegation, end quote. Former Bear County Constable Michelle Barrientes Vela is back in court this week, now a month after her conviction for tampering with records. The punishment phase of her trial continues. Judge Velia Meza could hand down punishment in the case by the end of the week. Now, proceedings were paused yesterday due to a court scheduling conflict. The disgraced former public official faces between two years probation and 10 years in prison. That's after altering security payment logs and handing over false records to law enforcement while under criminal investigation back in the summer of 2019. And caught on camera, a crash in Des Moines, Iowa ends with one car slamming into a house and another tumbling to a stop in the front yard. So take a look at the video. You can see the damage left behind. Two people in the cars were hurt and at last check in critical condition. One person was inside the house at the time of the crash but was not hurt. Still no word on what led to the crash or if any charges will be filed. 639, now 65 degrees. And how much do you know about breast cancer? Well, after the break, we're going to roll out some common myths about the diagnosis. And welcome back. It is 642. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, a time to recognize the disease that impacts one in every eight women in the U.S. Sarah Costa reports there are a lot of myths out there when it comes to this common cancer. I just, I felt something and I thought, huh, it was real tiny, but it just felt different. I just didn't think anything of it because of my age and I found blood in my bra. Kristen and Roshani are two and 3.8 million breast cancer survivors living in the United States. And while there's a lot of awareness, there's also a lot of false information floating around. Mm -hmm. The first myth, you must have a lump to have breast cancer. 
The truth is many cancers are found on mammograms that may not be felt and not all lumps are bad. In fact, 80% of breast lumps that are biopsied are not cancer. Another claim, you're not likely to get breast cancer if no one in your family has it. The truth is, only about 5 to 10% of breast cancers are caused by genetic mutations. And do mammograms always catch breast cancer? <laughs> Studies show mammograms miss about 20% of breast cancers at the time of screening. And having dense breast tissue makes it more difficult to spot and raises your risk for breast cancer by two to four times. It just makes it more difficult for the radiologist to pick up any uh, smaller uh, tumor if it's present there. You may have heard that a mastectomy is a better option than a lumpectomy, but this is also false in many cases. Recent studies have shown survival after a lumpectomy combined with radiation is equivalent to that of a mastectomy for most early stage breast cancers. Other common myths, bras with underwire, piercings and deodorant will cause breast cancer. There's no scientific proof that any of these will increase your risk. Some things that have been linked to breast cancer risk include using some forms of hormone replacement therapy for more than five years and drinking excessive amounts of alcohol. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Just about a quarter to seven. And I'm looking at the roads and things are picking up over there at Highway 281. Let's check back with Steven Cavazos. Yeah, things have been moving just fine over here. We had a few issues uh, on the roadway earlier, but it's all cleared out. And now we can see that morning rush is here and people are already getting out the door. 410 at Morrison is where one of those problems was picked up, but looks like it's already cleared out and traffic is moving. Taking it right to the map, though, we obviously are already seeing a lot of that build up take place in the usual hotspots. US 90, if you're traveling in the eastbound lanes by 1604, as well as 410, going up north there is and of course over on the northwest side so areas you have to be on the lookout for but you see those active road closures as well let's take a look at what's going to take place a little bit later we talked about this drilling work earlier in the morning i-35 on the northeast side of san antonio this will actually begin tonight and wrap on thursday october 6th it does begin at nine in the evening and should wrap at five in the morning left lane closure on the northbound frontage road of i-35 from Beaumar lane to o'connor road is what you can expect so just be on the lookout there if you're a late night owl or early bird commuter, but right now the commute is moving just fine. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Stephen. Uh, Mike, could you call this right tibia green? <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, the more I've looked at this picture over the course of the morning, the more I see in the picture yes. in the course of the morning. The caption is fantastic. It's all fun and games until somebody loses a femur, which is sitting right there. And then there's the dog. Aww. There's the, the little one spinning the, uh, or is that the dog spinning the that looks like the dog. That's another. Dogs. The dog is running what, the game. Oh, is that a cat? Oh yeah. Oh. And then where's the the little kid? Oh, there's the little there the kid kids, right there. Uh, yeah, Hard the to kids see. Okay. Right there. Yeah. Again, the more you look at this thing, the, the <laughs> <laughs> I love that. So, so again, cute. Thank you very much for that, and uh, <laughs> scan that QR code to uh, easily download some of these uh, KSAT Connect pictures. All right, little bit of a glow out there, or is that just the lights from the uh, the cars? But uh, we'll be seeing. Um, a decent sunrise this morning with a lot of clouds out there. We got a lot of those high clouds still. 57 burning stage, 52 comfort, 66 in town, 58 in Balverde. Overall, these numbers are up just a hint from yesterday. And these dew points measure moisture still below uh, 60, but they are up uh, a couple of degrees, actually down right there in Pleasant and Carrizo Springs, but up to two, three degrees in around the area. Not a lot, but that will be the trend, especially going into the latter half of the week, that we'll see just a hint more humidity coming on in here. So we keep some of the high clouds around this morning, and we'll bottom out at 63, and then fewer in the way of high clouds later on today. We'll make it up to 81 at noon, and then 89 for a high temperature later on this afternoon. So we're going to be about six, excuse me, about three above normal. <laughs> All right, here's what's going on. We've got this high, which is sitting just about right on top of us. That is, uh, well, think back to the summer. That's kind of pushing down in the atmosphere, suppressing anything as far as any uh, rain trying to form up around here. We do have the moisture coming in from the Pacific Ocean. That's why some of those high clouds. So the high is really not going to go anywhere. Um, it will move down into the Gulf of Mexico, but that's not really a, a good position as far as getting any fall weather. It will, though, help to throw some moisture in here. That's going to help out with the humidity, unfortunately, but we don't really have any decent uh, rain chances. No storm systems coming on in here. That low off the Baja of California is just going to sort of sit out there and spin. It's one of those cutoff lows, so it's like a 
just a wheel spin tire spinning in the mud doesn't get any traction and go anywhere. There is a larger trough that's going to try and develop up to the north of us going into then next week. Does that mean some sort of a front? Well, we got to get this thing to move positions first and go out there. So really, there's no decent fall weather. You know, anything like the first really big front uh, in the offing, at least in the, the short or long term forecast. 81 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies. Then a high temperature is going to make it up to 89. So again, three above normal going into the next couple of days. 90, not more sunshine tomorrow, Thursday, bit more humidity going into the uh, long holiday weekend and we'll be back into the mid 80s. So closer to normal high temperatures, low temperatures will be three, almost four degrees above normal. So a little more humidity. And don't forget to see more of the skeleton creations throughout the month of October. Keep it right here on GMSA or go to the Facebook page, Skeleton House of San Antonio. So much fun. Oh, I love that. Yes. I love it. It's a treat for us, so thank you. It is 649, 65 degrees. And have you ever experienced email anxiety? Hmm, I have. It's a real thing and more common than you think. Tomorrow on GMSA, we're talking about how to fix it and how to prevent it. Let's check on that sunrise. I know it was hard to see there on the uh, the cube over there where Mike is. Yes, the sun is coming up. You can see it poking through the clouds there, that cloud deck that's over South San Antonio and South Texas. We're going to wrap up GMSA after this break. Stick around. We'll be right back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the major escalation by North Korea overnight, firing a missile over Japan, while Vladimir Putin raises the threat as Russian forces lose ground to Ukraine. We're going to have the latest on all of that. And this morning, the around-the-clock search and rescue missions still happening in Florida as the death toll keeps rising from Hurricane Ian. We're on the scene. And the stunning report about widespread abuse in women's soccer, the reaction this morning, and the call for change. That and so much more right here on GMA. More than 100 gunshots ring out in this West Bear County neighborhood overnight, hitting two women inside a home. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. One of the women was killed, the other one shot in the leg. Now this is the 11,400 block of Bald Mountain. This neighborhood is near Loop 1604 and Marbach Road. Deputies got the call here around 12.30 this morning for shots fired. When they arrived, they noticed a white four-door car speeding out of the area. Now some of the deputies chased after that car. The others went to the home where they found the two victims. The deputies uh, who were chasing the car managed to stop it with the help of San Antonio police and took two people into custody. They're not calling them suspects in the shooting just yet. They're still trying to sort all of that out. But for now, they've been here ever since about 1230 this morning here on Bald Mountain trying to sort out exactly what happened and why. Reporting from West Bear County, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Quick update on our phone bank to raise money for Ian Storm Recovery. We were able to raise about $18,000, and while the numbers are still being tallied, you can still donate to the Red Cross by scanning this QR code on your screen. The estimate also includes a $10,000 donation from a company called Park King here in San Antonio. It is October, and that means it is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and this is a time to make sure that all women have the right information to take care of themselves. Today on GMS 8 9, we'll have a breast medical oncologist at UT Health San Antonio joining us to talk about risk factors and what women need to know about mammograms to keep themselves healthy. That's today at 9. And time now, 6.55, let's check back with our Stephen Cavazos. Things were a little bit busy for a while, but they've actually cleared out. Now, uh, traffic is just picked up there. You can see at 281 right by the airport. Uh, watch out if you are heading through the area. Thankfully, nothing major to report as we take you right to the map. Uh, just a few slowdowns. That will be the headline, at least for now. US 90 eastbound, as usual, as well as 1604 over on the northwest side. And 35, wow, we're already seeing a buildup in those southbound lanes. So just drive carefully. We'll watch roads closely, Mike. Thank you, sir. Clouds out there this morning. Not even as many holes in the clouds uh, for the sunrise as what we had yesterday. A little bit of an orange glow here and there. And you can see uh, somewhat of it out there, but 66 here in town, 57 Bernie stage, 67 in Helotus. Light jacket, but you won't need it this afternoon. 89 for a high temperature today, partly cloudy skies, and we are going to have a lot more sunshine, warmer 90 tomorrow, Thursday. A little bit more humid going into the weekend, mid 80s for high temperatures and mid to even some upper 60s for low temperatures. Thank you, Mike. Steph, glad you're back from your four day weekend. Thank you. It's great to be back. Thanks for having us and we'll see you back here at nine.